everyone. Welcome to Family Night. My name is Terika. I'm the Children's Librarian here at the West Bend Community Memorial Library. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I have just a couple of quick announcements before we begin. If you haven't signed up for summer reading, you still have a couple more weeks to do that. You can sign up on Beanstack online, or you can stop into the library and pick up a reading record here at the children's desk in the library. We are doing some take-home crafts at the library, so every Monday we have crafts that you can take home. So you just come into the library, grab a bag, and you can work on it at home. We give out a hundred of these a week, so pop in on Mondays and grab your crafts. Our next performer is July 30th. It's Miller and Mike. Can you see that? All right, Miller and Mike, they're going to be on July 30th on Facebook Live. Now for tonight's show, let's all give a nice warm welcome to the magic of Isaiah. Welcome to the interactive comedy magic show by the magic of Isaiah. Sit back, relax, and be prepared to be mystified. Are you ready? Let's give a big round of applause for the magic of Isaiah! a lot of magic. Are you guys ready for some more? I can't hear you. I said, are you guys ready for a little more magic? All right. Well, I can't hear or see you. So if we're going to interact on Facebook, all I want you to do is give us a like or comment in the button there. And we're going to go ahead and get back to you in a little bit. But my name is the magic of Isaiah. Can everybody say hello, Isaiah? Wonderful, wonderful. Now I have three rules of the magic show. Rule number one, everybody needs to know how to clap. So put your hands together and clap as loud as you can. All right, all right. When you guys see something you like, feel free to clap as loud as you want. Rule number two, everybody needs to know how to laugh. So give me your best laugh. Very good. Do not hold those laughs in, I repeat. Do not hold those laughs in. You may explode throughout the show with laughter. So when you guys see something funny, feel free to laugh as loud as you want. And rule number three, which is the most important rule to any magic show, is of course, the magic word. And today's magic word is going to be, reading is magical. But I'm going to say reading is, and you're going to say, magical. That's right. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking, though. You're wondering if I'm going to be any good. But you know what? I'm wondering the same thing. About you, the audience. That's right. I'm going to put you, the audience, to a test. If you can pass my test, I might stay and do some more magic. But if not... I'm packing everything up here and I'm going home just a little bit early. I'm going to perform to you the very first trick I ever performed live in front of an audience. See? Magic show. I was nine years old. I was in my, uh, in my local library. There were about ten people there. They were reading books with Dewey Decimal numbers running through their heads. And here I come out, nine years old, with the only thing I could find in my library to do a magic trick with, which of course were my bookmarks. And I had how many? Count with me everybody. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, and five. I took one of those bookmarks and I threw it away. I snapped my fingers. I waved my hand over the bookmarks. To my amazement and yours, I still had how many? Count with me everybody. One, two, three, four, and five. And everybody was so excited. They pumped their fists like this and they yelled, Isaiah, that was amazing. Oh boy. I didn't hear any of you say, Isaiah, that was amazing. You know, I might have to pack up and go home just a little bit early. And I, 
Oh, wait, unless you want, would you like a second chance to pass my test? Okay, I will give you a second chance. We have a few people out on Facebook. We have Amanda, we have Riley, we have Rich. We're going to give you a second chance to pass my test, okay? The very first trick I ever performed live in front of an audience, I was six years old. See, magic show. I was in my local library, and there were about... 50 people there, that's right, they were reading books with Dewey Decimal numbers running through their heads. And here I come out, six years old, with the only thing I could find in my library, which of course were my bookmarks. I had how many, count with me everybody. One, two, three, four, and five. And this time I took not just one of those bookmarks, I took two of those bookmarks and threw them away. I snapped my fingers, I waved my hand over the bookmarks. To my amazement of yours, I still had how many, count with me everybody. One, two, three, four, five. And everybody was so excited. They pumped their fists like this and they yelled, Isaiah, that was amazing. Oh boy, I could feel the energy level was up just a little bit. But I tell you what, you guys weren't all in sync with one another. So I might have to pack up and go home just a little. You want a third chance to pass my test? Okay, I'll give you a third chance to pass my test. The very first trick I ever performed live in front of an audience, I was three years old. See? A magic show in Scribble. I was at my local library and they invited about, I would say 200 people were there. That's right. They were reading books with Dewey Decimal numbers running through their heads. And here I come out three years old with the only thing I could find, my bookmarks. I had how many? Count with me, everybody. Ready? One, two, three, four, and five. And this time I threw away. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine bookmarks. I snapped my fingers, waved my hand over the bookmarks. To my amazement of yours, I still had how many? Count with me, everybody. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, and five. And everybody was so excited, they pumped their fists like this, and they yelled, Isaiah, that was amazing. Give yourselves a big round of applause. I think I might stay and do some more magic. What do you say? All right. Well, now that I have your attention, we have some new guests that are coming on. We have Trenton there that just came on. Hey, Trenton, thanks so much for tuning in here. We also have Amanda and Riley and Rich that are on. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know what? Since I have your attention, I'm going to show you my favorite card trick because what would a magic show be without a card trick, right? In fact, I have my favorite card right here. It's the one in the middle. Which one is my favorite card? Yeah, that's right, the one in the middle. And on the back, my favorite card is the one in the middle. That's right, you're paying attention. Let's try that again. My favorite card is the one in the middle. That's right. And on the back, my favorite card is the one in the middle. I'm going to take out my favorite card, the middle card. We're going to put it right there, leaving me with my two least favorite cards, which happen to be the kings. That's right. We'll put those away. And just to see if you're paying attention, my favorite card is... No, no, not my middle card, no. Uh, what's that? No, no, not, not the ace. No, it's not my middle, not my favorite card. It's, it's actually my library card. That's right. And why is this my favorite card? Because I can go to the library and check out as many books as I want. How many of you go to the library and check out many, as many books as you can? That's right, we all should be reading. And in fact, does anybody know how many minutes you should be reading at the least? Let's see if anybody's out there on Facebook. We do have a little bit of a delay there, but maybe you can know that actually you should be reading at least 20 minutes a day. Now, can you read more than 20 minutes? Yes, yes, you can read more. Uh, can you read less than 20 minutes? No, you need to read at least 20 minutes because when you read, you learn new things. And when you learn new things, you become smarter. That's right. Who wants to be smarter? Oh, I know I certainly do. You know, when you go to the library and you check out those books, kind of like this book that came off the shelf here today, when you open it up, you're going to notice that there are a lot of words in those books. But when you read that book, those words, they disappear. And why do they disappear? Because you're reading and you're creating in your imagination what the story is like. And when that happens, all of the pictures of that story come to life, just like this. And it's better than any magic trick you can do in picking up that book and reading and using your imagination. That's right. That's the power of reading. Now, in fact, I brought with me some of my favorite books from my library. And the first one is Charlotte's Web. It's a classic in literature. 
And oh, by the way, uh, does anybody know what's so unique about Charlotte? Ah, that's right, that's right. She can actually write words in her web, which means if she can write words, she knows how to, yes, read, that's right. Well, I brought with me Charlotte's cousin Weaver over here, and uh, well, Weaver, he doesn't like to read, and because he doesn't like to read, you're going to notice that he has never learned how to spin a web. You can see that there. But no worries, because I brought a book just for Weaver. It's called How to Spin a Web. And we're going to put it in front of Mr. Weaver and see if he'll come out, read this book, go back in and spin his web throughout the show. But first, we need to give him a color to spin his web. And I brought with me some silky threads right here. We have the color yellow, we have blue, we have white, we have red and we have green. And we're going to place these right inside of this bag right here. Get this open. And we'll shake them up, shake them up, shake them up. I'm going to reach down inside and just grab one of those randomly, just like this. And we have the color red. This is the color we're going to give to Mr. Weaver to see if he'll come out, use it to spin his web. But of course, he's going to need to learn how to read. So we'll put that book in front of him. Now, it's important that on Facebook, you guys remind me to go check on Mr. Weaver throughout the show and see if he spun his silky web. So we'll go ahead and put that right in front of Mr. Weaver just like that. And we'll come back to him in just a minute. Now, I am going to need a volunteer, and I happen to actually have one volunteer with me here today. And Lydia, would you join me up on stage? Fantastic. Come on over here. And Lydia, thanks so much for joining us. Let's all give Lydia a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Now, Lydia, I have an important question for you. Do you believe in magic? Yes. You do? Oh, good. She's at the right show. Because magic is all about using your imagination. Kind of like when you open a book, you have to use your imagination. If you don't use your imagination, magic is like a puzzle. It takes your brain and ties it into a tight, tight knot, trying to figure out. How many of you out there have ever tried to figure out magic before? I know I sure have. Everybody watch that knot, watch it very carefully. Because when you use a little bit of your imagination, a little bit of magic, anything, anything at all is possible. Watch, watch that knot. Go down a little further, a little further. And just like magic, that knot comes all the way off, just like that. Now, Lydia, I asked you if you believe in magic, and you said yes. Do you use your imagination? I want you to go ahead, take this right here, pull it nice and tight with me, tighter, tighter. Did you feel that knot we put in there? Yes, okay, good. Place your hand right here. Put your other hand right over the knot, and slowly, Lydia, slowly begin to use your imagination and pull that knot as it dissolves right off. Keep going a little further. Keep going, just using your imagination. A little bit of magic, keep going. Do you feel the knot trying to tighten up? It doesn't want to come off, Lydia. Just keep using your imagination. And listen to the Facebook group applaud you like crazy as it comes off, just like that. And sometimes, that's what we're missing in our lives, is a little bit of magic and a little bit of imagination. Let's give my friend Lydia a big round of applause. Thank you so much for helping. Thanks. Oh, our next book out of my library is a classic author called Dr. Seuss. Now, I'm sure most of you have read a Dr. Seuss book before. Uh, this one is my favorite book. It's called Inside Your Outside, all about the human body. And there's one particular area in here that I like more than the others, and that is right here when they talk about the eyes. And why do I like this part of the book about the eyes? Because magicians love to fool you using optical illusions, right? And so this part of the book is my favorite part. In fact, I brought with me an optical illusion that I wanted to show you right at home that you can do by just watching the screen. And I'm going to introduce to you what we call in magic a magic hypnodist. Now, don't worry, it's not going to hypnotize you, but it's going to play a really cool optical illusion on your eyes. 
In a moment, I'm going to begin to spin the disc around in a circle just like this. It's your job to stare at the center of the disc as I count from 10 all the way down to number one. Once we get down to number one, stop looking at the center of the disc, look at my face, and a few seconds after that, you're going to see an amazing optical illusion. What I'm doing is I'm playing a trick with the muscles around your eyes. These muscles allow your eyes to move back and forth, up and down, and all around. So everybody stare right here as I count from 10 all the way down to number one. Here we go, everybody. 10. Stare right at the center of it. Here we go, nine. Don't take your eyes off it. Eight. If you get car sick, you may want to turn your head right about now. Seven. Just nod at your neighbor. Continue to stare. Don't blink. Don't look away. Here we go. Six. Five. We're halfway there. Remember, we get down to number one. You're going to look at my head. Continue to stare right at the center. Here we go. Four. Three. Two. And one, take a look at my head! Yeah! Round of applause, how many saw my head get bigger? Yeah, that is an optical illusion. Now don't worry, if it didn't work for you, we're gonna do it again, but this time, we're gonna go the opposite way. Instead of looking at this disc, you're gonna go the opposite way, you're gonna look at my head, and my head is not going to get bigger, it's going to get smaller right before your eyes. So everybody stare right here at the center of the disc. Here we go, everybody. We're going to start our countdown in just a minute. Here we go. Ten. Continue to stare. Don't blink. Don't look away. Nine. Your eyes are going to want to, but don't let them. Here we go. Eight. Remember, we get down to number one, you'll look at my head. Here we go. Seven. Keep staring at the center. Six. Five. Halfway there. Here we go. Four. Three. And one, take a look at my head, yeah! Round of applause, how many saw my head get smaller? Yeah! And that is the power of optical illusions. That's right, it's a natural illusion that happened right for you. Oh, what was that? Oh yes, we should probably check on Mr. Weaver. We've given him enough time by now. He should have snuck out, had read his book, and went back in to spin his silky thread. Let's take a look and see if he's done that. Oh, Mr. Weaver, oh boy. He hasn't come out at all. He hasn't touched his silky thread one bit. But that's okay, because remember, I said we were going to give him to the end of the show, right? Yeah, that's right. So we'll have a little bit more time that he can come out and read that book. So we'll check on him in just a little bit. We'll come back to him. We'll go ahead and close him all the way up. Perfect. Now, I did bring with me a very special guest with me today. His name is Snowball My Rabbit. Now, uh, Snowball has an important message for all of you at home that are readers of our West Bend Public Library, and I'm going to bring him out right now, so let me go ahead and grab him. Okay, come on out, Snowball. Uh, snowball. 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 What? Listen, I brought you here today for these people, this audience. What audience? Uh, right there in front of you. Oh. Exactly. Uh. That's right. What am I supposed to do? Well, remember we brought you here to sing that song. Song? What song? Uh, the alphabet song. Oh, yeah. Can I finish my book first? Uh, no, no. I need you to sing that song. We practiced it. Oh, come on. That's not fair. I was reading a book, and right when I get to the best part, you take it away. I know, I know, but remember, they're here to listen to your song. Okay, I'll talk to them, but can't I just finish that one page, please? Okay, fine, but make it quick, okay? Okay, thanks. I will never forget this. Yeah, sure, okay, go ahead. Okay. Oh, this is good.
listen, Snowball, there's a time and a place for everything. Right now, we don't have the time for this. Oh, oh not yet. Please. I was almost finished. I know, I know, but really, they want to hear you sing the song. But I can't. The story was so good. I know, I know, but really, they're waiting. We only have so many minutes. I know, I know, but it was a classic called Treasure Island. Ooh, that is a good book. Very good book. Oh, yes, it is. This guy gets a hold of a mysterious treasure map stolen from an old buccaneer. And he and his friend, they get on a ship with a bunch of scary sailors. Oh, wow, what happened? And they set off for Treasure Island to collect the gold. Oh, wow, this sounds good. Yeah, and the captain was Long John Silver, a crusty old pirate. His crew started a riot and tried to mute and get hold of the treasure themselves. Wow, what happened next? Okay, there we are on Treasure Island with greedy pirates. All of us fighting for the gold, digging, digging in the sand, trying to find the treasure chest. When suddenly... Yeah? When suddenly... You took the book away! Oh, I know, I know. I shouldn't have done that. Reading is so important. That's right, Snowball. It sure is. All of us who read are more successful in school, and you know what that means. Uh, what does that mean? It means reading makes you smarter. Oh, yeah, they know that. I told them in the beginning of the show it does. And good books can inspire you to use your imagination. Why, they can help you figure out what you want to do with your life. Now, that's important. Uh, yes, it is. Hey. And some books are like watching a movie in your head. When I read a book, I make up what the characters look like. I really love that. Well, in order to read, though, you have to know the letters of your alphabet, right? Right. Every one of those letters is in my book, so you have to learn to read well. Well, I'll tell you what. If you can sing us the alphabet song, I'll let you get back to the book. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'd like to get back to reading my book. Uh, when you're done, go ahead. Oh, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. I really want to read my book. I know you do, but you're halfway through. Go ahead. Finish. Now. Oh, Q, R, S, T, U. No, I think you're being a little unreasonable here. I just No, wanna... no, I am not being unreasonable. Remember, I brought you oh. here. T U V W X Why can't I please read my book? <laughs> you have one letter left. Go ahead. Yes. Now. Oh, all right. Z. Now can I have my book? I can't wait to get back to Treasure Island. Aye, aye, matey. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I just love to read. <laughs> wow, Snowball, that was an important message. Hey, we got some new guests online. We have Jessica and Jenny. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is the Magic of Isaiah at the West Bend Public Library. We're having a great time. We're about halfway through the show right now. And oh, that's right, we have to check on Mr. Weaver, right? Because uh, he was going to read that book on how to spin a web and come out and spin that web. Let me go ahead and check. Because uh, we're about halfway through, so he should have to... Oh boy, he still has not come out to spin his web. That's okay, though. Remember, we'll give him another, uh, say, about 10, 15, 20 minutes, and he'll probably come out and read that book. Okay, let's go ahead and put him away just like that, and we'll come back to him in just a minute. Now, my, my last book that I have here is a book about the planets. That's right. And uh, I have a question for you. Is this uh, considered a fiction book or a nonfiction book? That's right, it's a nonfiction, which means it's all about real facts versus fiction. And I have a question for you. How many planets do we have in our solar system? That's right, eight of them. We did have nine, and we kicked Pluto out because it was considered a dwarf planet, and the, it doesn't belong there anymore. But, hey, you know, I have a picture of something that you might see in a, a fiction book about planets, but not a nonfiction. And let me show you what that picture is right here. Do you have any idea what this is right here? That's right, it's a UFO, an unidentified flying object. Now, what might you find in a UFO? 
That's right, Martians or aliens. Do you see any Martians or aliens inside there? Take a really good look. Do you see any of those? See, now, if you're using your imagination, you'll see them, because there's the first one right there. And, oh, wait, 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 there might be a second one. There is a second one right there. And I'm going to need a volunteer. I have one right here with me today. And Lydia, would you mind joining me up on stage? We had Lydia on before. Let's give Lydia another big round of applause. Thank you, Lydia, for helping out. Now, Lydia, if you could take your hand, hold it up just like this, and squeeze it as tight as you can. Oh, she's got a good grip. This is going to work perfect, okay? And go ahead, open your hand back up. I'm going to take this Martian right here. I'm going to squeeze it as tight as I can in my hand, just like this. And Lydia, you're going to take this one and squeeze it as tight as you can, okay? Now, put your other hand on top of it, just like this, because on the count of three, we're going to say our magic words. Remember, I say reading is, you say magical. Are we ready? Here we go. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Reading is magical. And look at this. Watch that little Martian completely disappear from my hands. It jumps from my hand all the way over to Lydia's hand. If that happened, she should have how many? That's right, two of them. Go ahead, Lydia, show them how many you have in your hand, just like that. We have one, two little Martians. Now, we can try that again. Would you all like to try that again? All right, let's go ahead and try that again. If you could open up your hand, Lydia. We'll take these two Martians right here. She had it in her hand just a second ago. We're going to go ahead and place those right inside your hand. Put your other hand on top. Perfect. Now, I should have another Martian here. Um, Oh, it might be inside here. Hold on, let's see if he's inside the UFO. Oh, yo, here it is right here. It's the invisible one. Do you see it? Oh, remember, magic is about using your imagination, just like when you read. In fact, everybody imagine that I have that little Martian right here in my hand. See him? I'll even tickle him. Ready? Tickle, tickle, tickle. That's right. I'll place him right here in my hand. Everybody watch my hand. On the count of three, we'll say those magic words. Remember, I say reading is, you say magical. Here we go. Ready? One, two, and three. Reading is magical and just like Chris Angel it completely disappears and it jumps from my hand all the way over to Lydia's hand now if you're using your imagination she should have how many ah that's right three of them go ahead Lydia show them how many you have in your hand and she indeed has one two and three Martians let's give my friend Lydia a big round of applause thank you so much for helping very good now uh, when we think about Martians in a fiction book and surfing around the space uh, what we might find in a nonfiction book is uh, astronauts, right? And what do they fly? And they don't fly in UFOs, do they? No, they don't fly in UFOs at all. In fact, they fly in one of these right here. A rocket, that's right. And in fact, we're gonna build our very own astronaut right here. I brought with me some parts to that astronaut. Now, the first part we have are, of course, the space boots, and we have the space body. And the last and the most important part is the space helmet. Now, which one is going to go in first to make our astronaut? Uh, yes, it would be actually the space boots, right? Because that would be the one down here. So we'll place the space boots in just like that. Uh, which would go next? Yes, yes, the space body, that will go next. And the final one, the most important one is, of course, the space helmet. We'll put that one in last. Now, I think you did it, but of course, we need to say our magic words. Are you ready? One, two, three, reading is magical and take a look just like that you guys did it you put your own astronaut together just like that give yourselves a big round what was that what look where what are you talking about wait. oh my goodness wait a minute the helmet is way down here where the feet are hold on a second here that is not how we put it in I am certain we did not put the helmet in first because I know for a fact we put the space boots in first because you told me to do okay okay let's try that again we'll place the space boots in first we'll go ahead and place the rocket in rocket on top and uh, what's gonna go next yes that's right the space body that'll go next and the last and the most important part which of course is the space helmet all right good okay I think we have it on the count of three we'll say our magic words ready one two and three reading is magical and just like that, you guys did it. Give yourselves a big round of applause. What's that? Oh, wait a second here. Wait a second. The helmet is now in the middle. And I can hear Melissa and Annie out there yelling at it, too. That's right. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. I know for a fact we did not put the helmet in second. Because I know you told me that we were going to put the body in next, right? Okay, okay. Let's try this one more time. Because you know what I'm finding out here is that this helmet is becoming the problem. The helmet at first ends up down here. Then it ends up here. It never ends up on the top where it belongs. And I'm thinking this helmet needs a little bit more experimenting. So 
I brought with me my laboratory. Let me grab it right here. Perfect. We're going to place this helmet inside this laboratory and do a little bit more experimenting with it. I'm going to go ahead and press this button right there. Perfect. Oh. Wait a second. That wasn't supposed to happen. I'm a little nervous and it's completely gone. It completely disappeared. Wait a second here. You don't think, you don't think that it went here. Should we check? We should check right here. Okay, let's take a look. And did you do it? Did you do it? You guys did it. You put our astronaut together. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Now, we are coming to the end of the show, and uh, I brought with me a really cool card trick I wanted to show you, but uh, I am going to need a volunteer, somebody who has a deck of cards with them. Uh, yes, Lydia, would you join me up on stage here? All right, good. And did you bring a, a deck of cards with you here today? Nope. You didn't? Nope. Oh, wait a second. You're at a magic show and you forgot the cards? Yeah. Oh, boy, this is not good. Uh, Lydia, imagine you have a deck of cards in your hand. Hold it up really high so we can all see. Oh, yeah. Do you everybody see those? Yeah, I see them. If you could take them and place them right inside this bag, Lydia, just like that. Look at that, Lydia. You got us a deck of cards. That is amazing. Let's give her a big round of applause so far. She's doing fantastic. Now, with these deck of cards, though, Lydia, we need to verify that these are normal, okay? So I'm going to show those to you. I'm also going to show them to the audience too. So first of all, you can see that all the cards are different. And audience, if we hold this up, you can see all the cards are completely different as well. Very good. Now, Lydia, I'm gonna go ahead and riffle through here. Wherever you say stop, that's the card we're gonna use for this trick. Fair enough, Lydia? Okay, go ahead, tell me when to stop. Stop. Right there, go ahead, take the card right there at the top and go ahead, show everybody at home what card it was. And what card did you pick there? The Seven of Hearts. Now, I made a prediction. I made a prediction before I came here today. And I made it right here inside of my drawing pad. Would it be amazing if I open this up and the very first picture in this drawing pad is, of course, the card that Lydia stopped at the Seven of Hearts. That would be a miracle. That's right. In fact, Lydia, hold this up. I will show everybody my prediction, what I made before I even came to this show here today. And that is your card, Lydia, the Seven of Hearts. What? Um, it's, just the box. it's just the box, she says? Uh, well, then that means that your card is somewhere in the middle there, so that means I'm right. No, not really. Uh, okay. I guess the audience at home is going to want to see some magic. Would you agree, Lydia? Very good. Everybody in the count of three will say our magic words. Watch right here. One, two, three. Reading is magical and watch that one card slowly rise out of that deck and what's really cool check it out though is that this card is really truly printed on this piece of paper it doesn't come off it is really truly printed on here the card that you stopped at Lydia the seven of hearts and to prove it to you Lydia this is yours as a little souvenir to go home with let's give my friend Lydia one last big round of applause thank you so much for helping Well, we've come down just to the last trick left. Oh, oh, we should probably check on Mr. Weaver, right? We've given him all show to figure this out, so let's take a look. By now, he should have spun his web, so he... Oh, boy. This isn't good at all. He still hasn't spun his web, and this was the color you guys picked. I mean, he hasn't even come out. He hasn't even read his book, but what do you think? Oh, I don't want to leave the door open because if you leave the door open, he'll come down and he'll get away. And I don't really want a spider running around your library. Well, I have a better idea. Uh, what if we took this and put it inside of his house? Maybe he would use it then. Okay, hold on. Let's put these doors shut. We'll go ahead and put this book in front. And I'll place it right back in here just like this. And we'll go ahead and give him... Put it right there. Perfect. Now we'll come back to him in just a second. Now for my very last trick, I brought with me a couple things. I brought with me a ribbon, as you can see. I also brought with me some playing cards, but they're not ordinary playing cards. They are alphabet cards. That's right. We have S, we have G, we have F, we have M, all different types of letters. And I also brought with me A bag. It's not just any bag, though. 
it's a magic bag and it's completely empty. I'll even come up to the camera and show you. It is completely empty. There's absolutely nothing inside that bag. But now we are going to place inside of that bag this ribbon right here and some alphabet cards at the bottom of it. Now, the only thing we're missing is something we really haven't seen a lot of today, and that's a magic wand. And I brought one with me right here. And it was the biggest one I could find. So on the count of three, I'll say reading is, you say magical. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Reading is ma- oh, That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on. Let me try that again. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, okay, stop laughing, okay? Hey, I said stop laughing out there. This isn't funny, okay? All right, hold on. Let me try that again. Okay, I think we're- Okay, hold on a second. This wasn't supposed to happen. Stop laughing out there. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, I think I have it. I think I have it. Okay. Whew, that works. No, it didn't work. Okay, hold on. I have a better idea. You, the audience out there, go ahead, take your fingers just like this and wiggle them right at the bag. And on the count of three, we'll say our magic words. Reading is magic. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Reading is magical. This, this, this only happens in practice. I can't believe this. This only happens in, in practice here. Wait a second. You can see that all the letters are now on the ribbon and it says, reading is magical. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Yes, reading certainly is magical. Oh, what was that? Oh, we have to check on Mr. Weaver, don't we? He's the last thing left. You don't think that he did. Let's take a look here. Wait a minute. What color did we pick? That's right, red. We picked red. Okay, let's take a look. And indeed, he has spun his web. And that's the importance of reading at least 20 minutes a day. Because when you read, you learn new things. And when you learn new things, you become smarter. That's right. So be like Weaver. Come to your library. Check out as many books as you can. I challenge you to check out as many books as you can the rest of the summer and see if you can read at least 20 minutes a day. Uh, my name is The Magic of Isaiah. I thank you so much for watching. But before we go, we need to give a big round of applause to your library, the West Bend Public Library. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of the summer. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.